Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're gonna be checking out the PowerCon exclusive Masters of the Universe Origins Evil Horde Four Pack. Uh, this thing is absolutely bonkers. So we're gonna start by taking a look at this insane box that these four figures come packaged in. And once again, I'm gonna say this. Mattel always really overdoes it with their exclusive packaging. So anytime they have a convention exclusive figure, they really get creative with their packaging and we always get some beautiful art and just some really fun stuff. And this set here is no exception. This thing is wild. Like I can't believe, first of all, this box is huge. Like I'm having a hard time like finding a good way to fit this up on my table and like show the thing on video. That's how big this box is. It's like a, the size of a huge hat box, right? Uh, the Evil Horde logo is up there on the top, but all around the sides on this box is absolutely gorgeous artwork uh, that looks like it comes straight out of the vintage line. So for example, here is the Fright Zone as it appeared in the original toy line, complete with the little monster, you know, that was a hand puppet. Uh, you know, you got the little prison cell there, you got the tree with the vultures. Look at this crazy little critter down here running around. I mean, it's amazing, just this really moody artwork. And this goes all the way around. Look, there's the little red, bat thing that Hordak hangs out with and uh, just kind of roll all the way around to the other side where we've got this amazing artwork of the slime pit. Oh my gosh. We've also got like all the broken columns and everything, which is a direct homage to the box art for the slime pit in the vintage toy line. There's even like some kind of crazy slime monster thing down here. I mean, this stuff is incredible. I love the artwork here. Look, this guy right here too. So that's pretty great, but look, when we fold this around to the other side again, you can open the box like this. Look, it just kind of spins open like a revolving door and it reveals our four figures housed inside this wild packaging there, which gives us two Horde Troopers, a black one and a red one, something we've never had in vintage stylings before. We've got a blue Hordak, which is a little bit more filmation inspired. And we've got the dark face version of Grizzlor, which is inspired by one of the variants of Grizzlor from the vintage toy line. It's an amazing packaging, just really, really cool. It's got these little tabs, so it's easy to kind of just pull this and close it up again if you want to do so. It looks like we've just got these little bits of tape right here that are also holding this in place. So really, if you just cut these, we should be able to slide this out of there, which means if you want to keep this box, it makes total sense, right? This is a beautiful display piece. It's got beautiful artwork on it. Definitely something that I'm going to hang on to, even though uh, I don't always hang on to empty boxes. I probably will hang on to this one specifically. It's really nice. It's a bit large and a, you know, it takes up a lot of space. I will say that is one negative, but the whole thing is just just a really fun design, great artwork. But let's go ahead and get this opened up so we can get a closer look at the four figures within. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start with a look at Hordak here, since this is the third Hordak that we've already received in the Origins line, but uh, all three of them are, you know, different Hordaks. So this time around, we've got one that is more inspired by the way he appeared in the Filmation animated He-Man and She-Ra cartoons. Uh, so this time around, he's got the bright blue skin tone. He's got the very bright white face with the blue mohawk painted on. And of course, he's got some robotic features in the form of his right arm over here. Now, the majority of this figure is essentially just reused from the last two Hordak figures that we already got. Uh, most of the body, the armor, the boots, all that stuff just comes off of the standard Hordak release, while the different heads and uh, even the extra hand and everything comes from the Buzzsaw Hordak Deluxe figure. So all of those have been reused, but we do now have a robotic right arm that has a silver arm cannon. So this is pretty cool because we saw Hordak do this quite a bit in the original series where he would turn his arm into a cannon of sorts there or all sorts of different things. Um, 
You know, it's got some great stylizing going on there. Definitely has kind of that horde flair to it. It is done in a silver color. Got a nice silver paint deco, which matches the same kind of shiny silver that they use to paint on the armor and around the headdress there, the collar, the belt. Uh, so all that. It looks really, really nice. And overall, the paint deco is very clean on this guy. Uh, you know, got the bright red cape on the back there. So I do love the addition of the cannon arm over there. Now, I just showed you the uh, interchangeable head because uh, in the package he comes with that smiling head. Now again, we did see that same smiling head released before with Buzzsaw Hordak, uh, but that one was in the more traditional colors. So same head, but now with the bright white and blue paint deco. But you can also swap that out for the angrier standard Hordak head if you wish to do that. And of course, you can easily do so just by popping the head off the ball joint, popping the new one on in its place, and uh, now we have a much angrier looking Hordak. So of course, articulation is exactly what you would expect. And as you can see, we have all the same interchangeable parts. So I just popped off the head a second ago. The arm does pop out of socket. Uh, I will say this is not clipping in as tight as you would like it to. You can see it's actually pretty loose on there. Uh, that's not an issue I run into very much with Origins. Usually these joints are uh, nice and tight, but this one, I'm having a hard time even articulating it without the arm popping out of socket, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, we do still have the swivel at the elbow, the bend at the elbow, the swivel at the wrist, the hinge at the wrist, and of course you can pop the hand out of socket at the wrist. We can uh, swap it with the more open palmed hand if you don't want the gripping hand there, so that is an option as well. Uh, the cannon arm, of course, you can remove the whole arm from the shoulder socket. However, the cannon does appear to be permanently attached. Definitely doesn't look like they intended that one to come off. I'm sure with a little bit of work, you could remove it if you want to, uh, but it is worth noting it's not the same kind of joints, obviously, uh, that we see on the standard wrists. Otherwise, you can move the torso left and right. You can also uh, pop the torso off of that joint there. I am just really having an issue with parts popping off when they shouldn't be. There we go. Head's nice and secure now. Uh, legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards, swivel at the knee, bend at the knee, swivels at the boot. Ankle can go forwards, backwards, uh, can slightly rock side to side. But again, just like on previous Hordax, this doesn't actually work too well on this figure, I guess because of the overall shape and design of his boot. Uh, but you can also remove remove the boots from the legs there as well from more of that mixing and matching. So lots of cool stuff going on with this Hordak. It's just a nice color variation. Uh, plus, you know, we do still get the white Horde crossbow that you can always attach to him there. And he even comes with the red bat shield that the standard release had. So we've actually got quite a bit going on with this particular version of Hordak. And since we keep talking about Hordaks, why don't we just go ahead and do this? It's comparison time. So now you can go ahead and see our brand new blue Hordak standing alongside the standard retail Hordak and the deluxe Buzzsaw Hordak. And here is another comparison I want to do because while we've never had the Blue Hordak released in vintage style from Mattel before, it was never in the vintage line, but Super 7 did release a Blue Filmation Hordak in their vintage style toy line. So here's what these two look like side by side. Of course, the Super 7 one is much more in line with the vintage figures as far as minimal articulation and all that goes. Uh, but it's really interesting seeing that we now have two Blue Hordaks in that 5.5 styling. So that's going to bring us over to Grizzlore. And this is a really exciting one as this is one of the standard original Horde members uh, that we're finally getting in the Origins line. But the version that comes in this particular four pack is a nod to a variant figure from the vintage toy line being the Dark faced Grizzlore. The standard Grizzlore has that much more light brown or tan colored face. Uh, while there was a harder to find variant in the vintage toy line with this dark brown painted face. So the version that comes in this pack has that darker face that likely means that the retail release will look more like the standard release with that tan face. Um, so really interesting that we've got that version here. I think it's fun that they're doing little things like that and I like that they throw in 
stuff like this in these exclusives so that the standard version will still be available at retail. I always think that's a good thing. Now, Grizzlor is going to be really interesting to look at because they maintained the real fur from the vintage toy. When he comes out of the package, it's definitely a little smashed and it looks funny. So, you know, you're going to have to tease it a little bit there. Do a little bit of styling with your doll. I mean, action figure uh, to get Grizzlor looking a little bit better. Um, but, you know, he's got to be like this because that's what made the vintage figure so cool. And I'm glad to see that they followed suit with this figure. What I was really interested in was how they did this. Was it going to be a solid body suit that was stitched around the figure like the vintage? Uh, but what I found out is that they actually did break it up because all the articulation is still intact. For example, we can pop the head off the ball joint and you can see that he's got the head, the hair stitched to the head there. We can also pop the torso off the legs so you can see it is two separate fur pieces. Now these are stitched around the figure. They do not look like they are meant to be removed. Again, I'm sure if you really wanted to take some scissors to them or something like that, you could probably get them off there. Um, you can still pop the arms out of socket. So you probably could work the one off the body if that's something that you really wanted to do there. In fact, underneath this, can I even tell? It's just the standard body underneath there. You can see it just done in that darker brown color. So this is really cool. I think it's done really, really well. He's got his uh, standard little harness with the red bat horde logo right there, uh, just like on the vintage toy line. I will say the head doesn't clip on very good on this guy. It's weird that I'm running into that a lot lately, and I hope this isn't like a quality control issue, because uh, I feel like, you know, I just had it with Hordak too, where these joints aren't clipping on as good as they should be, at least as good as they were in those first few waves. So hopefully, uh, maybe it's just mine. Maybe that's just the issue I'm having here. Uh, so he does have these furry arm sculpts, which is really, really nice. You can see he's got the Horde armband. This actually comes from the first Hordak release. It is a separate piece, so you could take it off if you want to. It's also uh, just like the ones that was in the Masters of the Universe Classics line. Um, so otherwise, all his articulation still functions exactly as you would expect. Really nice figure. Now, he also comes with an interchangeable hand. So if you want to remove his gripping hand on the left, we can give him another open hand. So that way you've got two open hands there, I guess, in case if you want some good roar poses. Uh, and he comes with his own version of the Horde crossbow, which just like on the vintage toy, is done in that green color. And uh, like I've shown you before, these even work just like the vintage figures. You just kind of push this little knob down here and you can see they work just, there you go. I mean, like seriously, they function just sort of, kind of, <laughs> exactly like the vintage ones did. I mean, they don't really do a whole lot, but you know, uh, overall, like this guy quite a bit. Really happy to get him and uh, excited for the eventual upcoming retail release that I'm sure we're going to get at some point. It's really nice to finally get more characters in the Evil Horde. And hey, we got to do this. It's comparison time because I do happen to have the variant dark face Grizzlor from the vintage toy line. So here's those two standing side by side. So that's going to bring us to the last two figures in the set, which are two very exciting figures. Horde Troopers, baby. That's right. Army Builders. Fans have always loved army building the Horde Troopers dating back to the vintage toy line. Uh, so it's really cool to see these coming into Origins. And just like we saw with Grizzlor, uh, Mattel opted to give us some interesting variations of the Horde Troopers. So we have a red Horde Trooper. I don't know, maybe he's a crimson Horde Trooper. And a black Horde Trooper. I don't know, maybe a shadow Horde Trooper. Uh, we have never had action figures of the Horde Troopers in these colors. Uh, of course, the standard Horde Trooper is gray with the red bat on the chest. I imagine that's going to be the retail release when these eventually come out. So this is pretty cool. You can pretend like these are commanders or something like that for your eventual gray colored Horde Trooper army that we're probably going to try to build as long as these aren't too impossible to find at retail stores. <laughs> what a good joke that is. Um, anyway, let's take a look at these figures because they're very cool looking. They look a lot like the vintage figure. In fact, they function just like the vintage figure, meaning they kept the little button mashing action feature intact. So if they get punched in the chest like a putty, 
boom, the torso pops open, and they're supposed to kind of flop around like a rag doll. That's what the vintage figures did. However, the articulation's much tighter on these guys. They don't really fall over. It just kind of exposes their innards there. Um, but yeah, you can see it's like a brand new torso, which is modeled a lot like the vintage one. You can see very robotic looking. It's silver on the inside of the red one here. here wow, it's a loud click when you put them back together. Let's do the same thing with this black one here. Boom, push the button. You can fold the chest open. We've got a red torso on the inside. Um, you know, otherwise, very cool looking. Now, these guys, fully original sculpts, right? I mean, there is nothing reused as far as I can tell because they had to create a new sculpt entirely for these guys, but they do look a lot like the vintage figures. But these guys are much more poseable, much more in line with what you would get with the rest of the Origins line. Ankles can even go side to side a little bit, even though we've got that large calf there. I think we can even detach these. Yeah, look at that. Obviously, these are going to be funny looking boots if you were going to do some swapping, but you could still remove them just like right in the middle of the calf there. Um, I, I, Oh, amazingly, you can still remove the torso from the legs, even though we've got that action feature built up there. Uh, the arms can still pop right out of those sockets. Uh, and I think the heads, let's let it probably work better if we actually open up the body there and then we can pop the head right off of that ball joint so it still retains all of the interchangeability all of the articulation but with the added bonus of that action feature in fact, why don't we go ahead and jump to this early on with a comparison time with the Horde Trooper from the Vintage line. You can actually see the new ones stand a little bit taller. That happens a lot with Origins, though, um, because of the way the legs are. Now, the Vintage one always had straight legs, but I think he had to be sized with the squat figure, so it actually makes him a little bit shorter. Um, but, you know, if we push the button on him... His body just kind of flopped open and he, see, he got all floppy. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, but you can see the overall build is very similar to that of the vintage figure. So these new ones are very nicely done. In fact, they come with their own accessories as well. Uh, you can see they each come with their own little horde spear, which is modeled after the spear that came with the vintage action figure. So you can put those in their right gripping hands. We've got a silver one for the black horde trooper and a black one for the red horde trooper or i suppose you can mix those up however you want to because if you want to color coordinate with like the armor or the bats on their chests or whatever you want to do uh but they also come with their own versions of the horde crossbows which is not something we've had for the horde troopers in the past so we've got a bright red one and we've got a silver one so that also kind of adds the idea that these guys might be generals or captains or something like that for the horde trooper army which is pretty cool stuff and there you go, my friends. There is a look at the Evil Horde 4-pack. This was a PowerCon exclusive for the Masters of the Universe Origins toy line. Uh, honestly, I really like this one. Everything from the incredible packaging to the really fun figures that are included in here. It's nice that they're all kind of variants, but they're really nice variants as well. Uh, we've already had two versions of Hordak at retail. I can imagine, like I've been saying, that the standard Horde Troopers and the standard Grizzlor will eventually come to retail. They have not been announced yet, but I feel like it's only a matter of time. There's no way they would have done the tooling for these figures and only make them exclusive. At least I hope not. That would be really, really dumb. Um, so hopefully we'll be seeing these at retail stores at some point in the future. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video and until next time.